Alright, hello and welcome friends to 4K Gaming and Tutorials. We have another helpful tutorial here for you today. Uh, a little bit on a side note here before we get started. Uh, not sure when those Ryzen videos are going to be finished releasing because I just sat down to try and do more testing on the GPU benchmarks since we just released the CPU benchmarks and the computer's fried. Yeah, well not actually like fry, like we overvolted it, like it won't do anything. It's blue screen after blue screen after blue screen, and they're all different. They're like all different. I've only gotten the same blue screen like three times, and I restarted it like seven. And it's like IRQ is less or equal, and bad pool header, and store un unhandled store exception. And it's like, really? Are we like playing a slot machine of BSODs? Like this is really unbelievable and I've searched all of them and none of them really seem to be helping. Even SFC slash space slash scan now said it couldn't do anything. Like it said we cannot perform the selected operation or something after it 100% verified. And that's just, and it's been restoring system files for like the past two hours. And the bad thing about that is, is that you can't do anything with it because then it might further corrupt the system, even though it's supposed to be restoring the system, but I'm pretty sure it's hung on something like this always happens, like every single time. I was actually enjoying a vacation away from not having to constantly fix stuff like every single week, week after week after week, because that actually happened for about two months. Too much, just solid, week after week, eight weeks straight, there was something to fix somewhere. I was enjoying not having that happen, but apparently, if this doesn't ha this doesn't go right or do anything productive, then we're going to have to reinstall Windows, whether it be an in-place installation or a complete clean installation. We're going to have to reinstall our whole Ryzen build. Then that's going to take about two weeks to get all the kinks worked out and actually get all of our stuff back on there. But uh, yeah, before this turns into a solid rant about that, I figure I would just mention that first and foremost. And also, that with that being said, we probably won't be able to edit this video because the computer I'm doing it on now, we don't have any of our editing software on there. So this will probably just be like a straight upload. So if it's less polished to a mirror-like finish to, than you're liking, then I apologize for that. But you're just going to have to bear it out with me and... Uh, that being said, the useful tutorial we have is for Windows 10 because since Ryzen and KB Lake, we have uh, been forced by the Microsoft guys themselves, as Barnacle says, uh, to use Windows 10 because it is the only thing that is supported. So yeah, and in some cases you can't even, it won't actually let you install anything besides Windows 10, which is really, really crappy, but we're not going to get off on that. So, since we've been forced to use this, we've been forced to find fixes for things that were so easy and simple in Windows 7, such as your start menu. In Windows 7, all you had to do is take your icon and drag it down here, and it would automatically be added to your, pinned to your uh, start list here. However, that is not the case any longer. This is a thing we already have up to demonstrate this, but as we see here, it has a little cross out sign to that, showing us that we cannot in fact so easily do that. And when we right click it, there is no pin to start menu option. So what do we do about that? Well, we come to this place here, which I actually already have open, which is uh, C colon backslash users backslash username backslash app data backslash roaming backslash Microsoft backslash Windows backslash start menu backslash programs. That is the explore destination for your start menu. And fun fact about the start menu, it won't let you pin anything or even add anything to the start menu that is not a shortcut, because as you see, shortcut, 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 shortcut. 
So when you add your whatever you want to add in here, you have to make sure that you add it as, as a shortcut or it won't show up there for whatever reason. So that's pretty much it. The thing that we're using here is I wanted my Chrome kill to be on here from my episode Save Your Chrome Tabs. So all that in a nutshell is Chrome automatically gets uh, its process into test kill force and then the Chrome whatever, Chrome EXE. Then we had added a pause so we could in fact authenticate that it was everything terminated because one of the friends I gave this to, they're like, hey, it, it didn't do anything. I'm like, okay, let me look at it. And it said that it couldn't. So we had to make a few edited changes there. So our Chrome kill is what we want to add here. And if you want to, you can go and watch that video. It is actually pretty useful. I use this all the time when I need to restart and I don't want to lose all my Chrome tabs, which actually seems like they should integrate that into Chrome itself. Like up here, it, it like might give you an option, like when you press the X, it'll say, do you want to save your Chrome tabs? Because it could definitely do that. But I'm not sure if that would hinder anything that they're trying to do, although I haven't noticed anything bad going with this. So I use it, it works great. And I don't have to worry about losing everything I was and go back in the history and looking through it. So, yeah. Once you get whatever you want to here, you can, like, maybe if you want to um, add a separate program in there, such as this, then all you do is take the program or the executable, you right-click it, say create shortcut. Then you take your shortcut and you go to open this up in explore drop that in there and actually we have already done this we did and did that right clicked it gave us a shortcut i renamed it to save chrome tabs and i actually went into properties change icon and found the chrome exe which has its icon in there and i chose this one just so like these could be actual little individual tabs, you know, kind of like in your head, and it wouldn't be the, it wouldn't be the Chrome like you see down here, like you go to open and click stuff. It would be a little bit different. So we did that there, and once this is in here, we can go in our start menu, and we can go all the way down to WinRAR or wherever it is, and we see it is here. Then we can say pen to start, and it will be pinned right here. So that's what that is. And that is how you get any program you want, really, and to pinned on your start menu, since you can no longer easily and seamlessly drag it onto your Windows icon, like we could for the longest time on Windows 7. Thanks, Microsoft. Anyway, if this video helped you, if you liked it, make sure you click that like button, Comment if you have any issues or concerns with that, and I will try to help you as best I can. And if you want more helpful content like this and tutorials and gameplay and benchmarks, I don't know about the gameplay part, but we're going to try to do some more gameplay, if possible, if we can keep our computer from crashing and burning right before our very eyes. I don't know I'm talking like this, but yeah, if you want more of this content and more of the tutorials that might actually help you and make your life a little easier and more seamless, then make sure you smash that subscribe button. Later guys.